Hello fellow Lincoln owners, this is my Lincoln uh, Continental, or my Continental Mark III, excuse me, I am so sorry. One of us starts a war between the various factions, Lincoln versus Continental. Uh, I found this car in Anaheim, California. I am the third owner. The second owner, I never knew the first owner, the second owner bought it in 1961, kept it to 1990 when he passed away. His family parked it in the garage in Anaheim. I went down to look at it. it. I could barely find it. There was so much junk piled on top of it. Rags, furniture, TV tables, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I was not real familiar with it. I knew these. I liked it because it's the very rare two-door model. It's an unusual color, and it is almost completely rust-free. There's no real rust in this car just about anywhere. It was always maintained. The second owner was some sort of audio engineer. And he uh, spent a lot of time on this car. This is not the original Pulsar. I think he redid it, but he did a good job. Again, don't forget through the 60s, 70s, 80s, these were not valuable cars at all. The fact that any of them remain is, is pretty amazing. But it has the very rare FM receiver. Now, when I first saw that, I thought it was some kind of Radio Shack accessory that they had stuck in the car. But no, it's the actual one that came from the factory. And when I looked in the Ford manual, it said the FM tuner, pick up wild and crazy radio stations with your FM tuner. So I thought, oh, this thing is pretty cool. So just a lot of elbow grease. Uh, the chrome is a bit faded, but not dented. I mean, she has a nice patina to it. And I don't really want to restore it because if I restore this part, then that part looks dull, and then, that, and then, and then I'm never going to, it's like trimming sideburns, you know, you're going to wind up with no hair if you keep trying to match everything to the way it should be. So it's got wear and tear, but not excessively so. I mean, it looks like a car that's been well maintained. I'm stunned that the dashboard is in such beautiful shape. No cracks, no creases. Luckily, it was not left in the sun. It was in a garage. And I think all the, you know, towels and t-shirts and bed sheets and everything that were piled on it actually kept it out of the sunlight and that protected as well. I don't think there are any windows in the garage. Uh, all, everything works, all the electric window, the electric eye, uh, the clock's a little tricky to get to, uh, but the uh, rear window goes up and down fine. I mean, this is exactly the way you want to find it. Oh, windows are a bit sticky. Let me put some silicone in here. Ooh, now they work great. You know those kind of fixes where you do something in an afternoon and it actually pays off? You know, isn't that thing where you keep going down a rabbit hole where it gets harder and harder? So all the little things that, you know, this didn't move and then we lubricated it. And, oh, oh, now it works perfectly the way it should, you know? All those adjustments. Uh, we put a master cylinder in it, put a new steering box in it, did the brakes, uh, did the wheel cylinders as you should. These were not known for their stopping power. I think they tend to be more retard progress was the word I think would be fair to say. You retarded progress as you went along the road. But uh, it's, I, I, I just get a kick out of it and it makes people smile. People ask me, oh, did you customize that front end? Because it looks like some sort of George Barris car from this, from the uh, 50s or 60s. And you see, you can see the Batmobile influence really in it when you look at it. You can see the Batmobile is not that far from this, although this was not, that was based on the Futura, but it, it's similar look and design. But it's just such a fascinating piece of Americana. Cars don't look like this anymore. Uh, and a lot of young people can't believe cars ever look like this. But this made a statement, you know, World War II was over, we won. You had a few bucks in your pocket, and this is the kind of car, if you're looking to buy a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, you're gonna pay ugh, a couple of thousand dollars a pound. This thing, three bucks a pound. You don't get a car like this. This is good ground chuck, three bucks a pound. That's what I paid, I paid about 12 grand for this thing, and, and I'm being kind, probably less than three bucks. This thing was, <laughs> weighs closer to 5,000 pounds. So it's not like two bucks a pound. So look at that. It was on sale, apparently. But anyway, that's, that's pretty much it. The guys will maybe take some pictures and show you the uh, FM receiver and maybe some of the other things. But for the most part, if you have to find a car, this is the way to find them. Just running so you know everything's there. No rust. 
just a lot of elbow grease and cleaning and, and this is a car that will be well maintained for the rest of its days. And it'll always look kind of like this. And hopefully in 10 or 20 years, it'll still look the same. So that's, that's pretty much it.